Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another episode of the Stokes Sound Podcast. I'm your host, Ed Stokes, and today we have super talented mixing engineer, mixed by Jocelyn. Jocelyn, how are you doing? What's going on, man? Happy to be here. Thank you so much for coming on. I wanted to, uh, you know, bring you on to this episode because. I absolutely love your mix work. I love kind of your process. And, uh, you know, I've seen some of your stuff online and I, you know, really like kind of what you're doing. So I thought Thanks the uh, listeners of this uh, podcast would absolutely love to hear kind of your process. So, you know, shall we kind of go from the start, you know, let us know kind of what, you know, door you're using and your approach and, and how you do your things. Yeah, yeah, no worries. So um, the door that I use mostly is Logic Pro. Uh, but I do use Pro Tools as well and sort of leaning more towards using Pro Tools, especially over the last couple of months as I've got into doing Atmos stuff. And um, as well, I recently went to a uh, mix with the Masters seminar with um, Jason Joshua and uh, was wow. given his Pro Tools template. <laughs> <laughs> so, send it to me <laughs> yo mate <laughs> he said he said to be fair he said anyone that deserves it give it to him so there you go well, i'll send it to you after this hopefully i deserve it after this episode <laughs> well yeah man but um so yeah i've just been trying to sort of like well just get my head around like how obviously like one of the best engineers on the planet mixes and i've yeah, got template, so i'm stupid not to try it do you know what i mean yeah so, but yeah. that's a pro tools template so yeah but most of the time i mean you know if i get sent a big project or something like that or it's a bit and or you know it's a quick turnaround kind of thing i'm still using logic because i can just you know i can do that with my eyes closed yeah um you know with the you know the shortcuts and stuff like that but yeah and i mean i'm fully in the box as well um i do have a handful of uh like a couple of pieces of gear nothing crazy um yeah. but uh yeah i like to keep it in the box i've been most i've been in the box for most of my career so and it's only getting better um but yeah i mean what else do you want to sort of know like i mean i mean it just it's interesting about you saying that you're using kind of logic i mean the way that you know do you feel like you say you occasionally use pro tools do you feel like there's a big difference between the daw that you're using to your mix approach so if you're using logic would you you know although it's still audio still stems and you're still going to have the same kind of plugins do you feel like it has a different sound in the sense of when you're doing it in Pro Tools just naturally, or do you kind of feel like it's a very easy crossover and it's, you know, very similar for you? Yeah. Do you know what? I don't know. Um, I don't like to get too much into the conversation. I don't know if this is what you're leaning towards, but like the, yep. um, how the doors sound, uh, yep. but I do feel like there is a difference. I yep. feel like with Pro Tools, I can get us, I feel like Logic has like a goo to it. That yeah. might not ne sometimes necessarily be what I'm trying to achieve. If you yep. see what I'm saying, um, in terms of like the engine and how the engine sounds and how it processes yeah, yeah. the audio. Um, yeah. but you know, I, I feel like that is such a small percentage of like what it means to create a good mix and like the process, yeah. like I tend to not like focus on it too much. And I don't, I just, what I want is I, I don't want the door to get in the way of me creating a mix and like me getting the sound that I want out of the mix. So I, I use whatever is yeah. easiest. That's amazing to, to hear though. Cause yeah. I find like, you know, a lot of the people that are listening, if you know, you go online and people go, oh, you know, process is better than logic and, and vice versa. Like they are literally all the same. Let's be honest. It's who's behind the tools that makes <laughs> all the difference. I mean, some and... <laughs> mad mixes have come out and they've been mixed on like FL. Do you know what <laughs> exactly, I mean? Or whatever. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Top 10 <laughs> hits have been created on every door, basically. So, mad, like, yeah, yeah. But I do think, obviously, it's, it's, it's just one of these things. I think it's, um, you know, it, it's personal preference and it it boils down to your workflow really but yeah. uh, one thing i will say when it comes to using doors like don't sort of like tie one arm behind your back sort of thing like make sure that you are like kind of good at all of them do you know what yeah. i mean because especially yeah. for like the new guys that are coming in if an opportunity comes your way you need to be able just to sit in front of any software and make sure that you can record like that's your job yeah. as an engineer in my opinion do you know what i mean like you need to be able to capture sound 
in the best way possible and whatever you've got in front of you now if you get an opportunity and this happened to me at the beginning of, a few times at the beginning of my career where you get invited to a studio session to to yeah. work with an artist and then they're only using pro tools for instance and you only use uh logic you're going to be at a massive disadvantage and you're not going to be able to represent yourself to the best of your ability just because you don't know a door that would take you like a weekend to like get a basic understanding yeah so that's my kind of like main take on it is like just just you know use all these doors at some points do you know what i mean you can get a free yeah. download a free trial of all of them do you know what i mean just get a basic understanding of it and then at least like you might be a bit slower or have to like double think things but at least you'll be able to actually get the job done do you know what i mean yeah so yeah and do you, uh, you know, if someone was to send, you know, uh, you know, it, it will, of course, depend on, on, you know, what they're sending you, of course, to mix. But let's say you get a full production to mix. Are you one of those engineers that kind of tend to start from the ground up, kind of like from drums first? Or do you kind of focus on vocals kind of you yeah, know, is that so whole thing I, as well? What, I have we're a, interested to I know. Have a very, I, I have a very <laughs> set way that I approach okay. mix, um, <laughs> yeah. and it hasn't changed in years. Not to say right. that it might, not to say that it won't change, and and if I don't. It works though. <laughs> yeah, well, and I don't, and I always try different things, um, and uh, I'm constantly studying other people's techniques and their way of mixing, but yeah. um, you know, as uh, my uh, old assistant will tell you, it's straight up drums, and then well, it depends. I break it down into three folders minimum. Yeah. Um, which is drums and then instruments and then vocals, depending on how big the project is, it, I might break it down into more sections. So if there's like a whole like string section that will have its own folder. If it's like a rock song with like loads of guitars, that'll uh, have its yeah. own section X, Y, Z. But like, you know, I break it. I like to be able to like visually see <clears throat> the sections of the song, uh, like from a glance. I don't like my projects to be messy. Another reason why I sort of, uh find i have issues with pro tools because i feel like visually it just just annoys me because i'm like having to like scroll through yeah. everything like you see these projects and you just you know have to find everything you know it's color coded but like with, it looks um, like windows 95 as well doesn't it? yeah yeah and it's just a bit crazy <laughs> do you know what i mean like i'm used to sort of like that apple gooey interface where it's just nice. like super easy for me and it just spoon feeds all the information to me do you know yeah. what i mean so like my logic i'll open it up and it will just be like three folders and then i just open up the drums and then all my drums are there and then i organize everything in a sort of certain way within those folders as well so yeah. i have like a kind of like idea you know, sometimes I don't know if this stuff makes sense when I say it out loud, but in my head it does. But like, I mi I organize my stems in like a priority of frequency, and then sort of like priority in the mix. So I go from like lows to highs in each folder, but I will swap out that sort of like low to high priority if it's like a main part if that makes sense so if i yeah yeah that's so like, interesting it, it, i've never heard of that kind of thing <laughs> yeah i don't know because i like to work on the, <laughs> the low ends first right but i'll mix all my drums first so it's kind of weird so i'll start with a kick then snare xyz percussions hats yeah and i'll get all the drums sort of like glued and and, and vibing with no instruments whatsoever so no uh, bass like nothing no no and this is okay. where like my technique does sort of differ from other people's that's interesting people like it's to great get the to hear kick all this bass. Yeah. but in my yeah. head i'm like well the the kick and the bass do work work together most of the time but it also has to work with everything else uh in balance yeah. so and i'm like you know i want my drums to be like most of the records that i do are like you know drill grime uk yeah. rap that kind of stuff so heavy so, on the drums then yeah it's like yeah and and that's just how i like to work and then i'll go onto the bass after and then i might mute a bunch of my drums that i've mixed and concentrate on that relationship between the kick and the bass but not not for long yeah i sort yeah, of have okay. my technique i never seem to like i don't know i don't know it might just be like a subconscious thing but i'm not really like struggling to get that sort of glue between the bass and the kick yeah uh, i anymore. mean that's a, that's a good thing though yeah exactly <laughs> and it's just it's just a yeah. proof it, it's just, it just proves that the, the the system that i've created not that it's perfect but it works do you know what i mean so um yeah i, I sort of 
that's how I work. And then it will be, mo then once I'm in that instrumental folder, I'll, it's still sort of working on that like low to high frequency downwards thing as I'm, as I'm going through the mix. Um, but it might change if like, it's really obvious, like the main part of the song is this guitar, like that's the main sample or whatever that I've been given for like yeah. a drill record. That's going to go directly after my bass because that's the next important thing. And then everything else can go on top of it. Like even if the pianos around, are yeah. lower or the pads are lower, they're not as important. So yeah. in terms of like the positioning of those instruments, so then they'll get thrown in after. And then the vocals is just like main vocal. And then... Yeah any bvs i work in sections yeah so are I'll you the like type the of engineer are you the type of engineer that kind of processes their lead very similar to their bvs or do you have a completely different technique for that because i see some mixers they kind of literally copy and paste change the eq and compression of those bvs and then other engineers are like now nah, completely different kind of way of processing it i'm just curious with um your, as you well it depends on like obviously if it's the same vocalist yeah. there and 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 it's similar tones i yeah. do sort of start with that similar process yeah. that i've worked on but what i tend to do is um if i'm finding like that i have to sort of like prioritize um like you know 2k or 3k in like the main to help it pop out i'll try to prioritize other frequencies in the bvs as i go down to fill in yeah. those pockets so giving more body to the overall vocal so i might like be boosting around like you know a k to 500 on some of those like bvs if they're like nice and low giving them a nice thickness yeah um and then yeah mo mo but most of the difference comes from like how i process the effects on yeah, those BVs. I guess the different reverb spaces and all of that. Yeah, kind yeah, of stuff. yeah, yeah. And like, yeah. I love, I'm big with delays. Like, I love like doing like trippy ass delays. And I spend probably <laughs> way too much time on the delays because then people never notice and care. But I'm like, I love it's it. It's a feel <laughs> thing. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's like, what I, I say to this... my wife, when she says to me, Why have you spent so long and choosing a reverb for a vocal? Just pick one and it works. And I'm like, Nah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, I, well, I like, you know, I, I was, I was working on a record uh, for this guy in, uh, in the Bahamas yesterday. Really right, cool. Yeah. Like the guy is, I'm working with the producer. Um, so I don't have direct contact to the, to the artist, but, um, yeah, I did this like really cool, like trippy, um, like I had like an eighth delay, like being bounced against a four ping pong and it was like really cool. Like, <laughs> and I did this sort of like a uh, pitch effect thing on it and that, and it just went right over the guy's head. I'm like, this is the coolest thing I've done in ages and it sounds so dope. Um, and he was like, yeah, cool. And I was like, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> moving on <laughs> <laughs> how long did it take you to figure it out then that, that delay i mean <laughs> I you go a few hours <laughs> i had an idea in my head so it didn't take me that long to do it but i was like fine tuning it to like shit yeah. like to make sure it was like exactly like where i wanted it because i just had this vision in my head of like creating this like space because it was right at the end of the song and i wanted yeah. to like bring like this character to it and uh yeah i don't know I mean, That's he obviously funny. liked it because it made it on <laughs> the final print. But like, yeah, yeah. Like, I was uh, like, you know, these things happen. Do you know what I mean? Like, whatever. Like most of the most of the work that we do as engineers just goes right over everyone's head do you know what i, I mean? feel like so. that's the, the a similar thing that happens all the time isn't it with engineers it's like you know we spend hours fine-tuning things and people just don't care but i will say if we didn't do that as engineers people may not know what it is but it would be different so it's definitely you know yeah and you know, i think worth. this is yeah. this is like the art the the argument that i was talking about with um a couple of my friends the other day because we were talking about ai and ai yeah. mixing and like oh are you scared or worried and i think like in the short term i think it's going to have an effect on like the business but in the yeah. long term i don't think it will because people will soon realize that ai isn't going to spend time creating those crazy effects and with those ideas and stuff like that because like uh, we it's we're human, isn't it? we're yeah. unique thinkers and like yeah. we think our job is to think outside of the box and constantly to be pushing this forward and ai literally can only think within the box it can only do what another thing has been done before like that's yeah. the whole point so yeah like 
I think it's, it is, it's, it's like really important to do those things. And, you know, some of the greats, yeah. that's how they like carve their career. Do you know what I mean? If you speak to like mixed by Ali and stuff like that, and you watch his career, he, his, the, what made him so unique and so popular and managed to carve this thing was because he took risks and did things with vocals, especially like on Kendrick's records that, that weren't being done on rap vocals. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And tried all these, like he, he's an effects guy. He loves like just try put, putting things on and trying it. And then that's yeah. where he created, that's how he like, you know, created this like niche for himself. Obviously he had like the foundations with one of the greats, um, Dr. Dre, but yeah. like, he's taken his career to a whole another level because of what what like what he's he, done his, his 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 own like you know creativity so, right i always say about mixers although like what we both do is, is technical it's also just as much creative as well as you know knowing all the stuff because well of course it is do you know what 100%, i mean 100 yeah. percent. i mean i think I a mean, lot of people get lost in that i think for any of the listeners listening you know you can watch mix with the masters about what eq they're using but it only goes so far doesn't it it's yeah, like yeah i think that is a, i think that is yeah. a common sort of like miss idea about like what we do thinking that we're just sort of like um you know tr just sculpting and doing the technical stuff and yeah. whatever but i think it's i think it's more important to be creative do you know what i mean like 100%. i would love to be able to play people like the reference and then my final mix and yeah. then, and then they t try to tell me that I'm not one of the most important parts of this record do you know what I mean like cuz <laughs> it, it didn't difference. sound like this do you know what <laughs> I mean like so like the, you know and but but again I think I I do think the industry is changing and I think um you know like 10 years ago producers had their like moment do you know what I mean like where yeah. they went from being a behind the curtain character in the industry to now being at the front yeah and i don't think it will happen quite in the same way but i feel like we are just about to turn the corner and do that ourselves where there's certain characters that are coming out of the woodworks like the alleys and jason joshua's and people like that that are like becoming like rock stars in their own in sort the, of in that field, unique yeah. way do you know what i mean and and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that how accessible our industry is now because anyone can start engineering. Like it's super... And social media as well. and Social media, yeah. the equipment being so much more accessible, it's no way near as expensive. Like people still say, oh, it's mad expensive. Like, bro, if you were trying to do this 20 years ago, yeah, you'd need like 50 Morgan. grand to <laughs> set up a studio. Do you know what I mean? You can yeah. set up a studio now and get a decent sound for like two grand. Yeah. Like less and, than that probably yeah probably that's, less that'd than be that. quite a good setup to be fair <laughs> yeah maybe yeah exactly i'm talking like desk speakers yeah, yeah you know yeah. the lot computer once you got like a computer and a speakers and stuff like that you're already in but exactly. like yeah so you know and and that and that becoming the 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 sort of new norm it is given an opportunity for people that, to expand yeah. into it you know so, i think it's interesting you say that about kind of us mixers being accessible because i've found in my career so far that sometimes a lot of i mean you say if you found this as well but a lot of artists i feel like they know what a producer is they 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 kind of assume the producer is going to just mix the record because they don't really know much about the mixing field and then they definitely don't know anything about mastering yeah, <laughs> they, yeah, yeah. you know i'm not saying I, i've said that in a general way i'm not saying everyone's like that but i've noticed that sometimes I feel like they're, they're, we're kind of so hidden. And and as you said a second ago, like we are becoming more, I guess, famous, I guess you could say it, in, in, the, in the mixing world in the sense of people are more understanding of what a mixing engineer does and the difference between like a rough mix, producer mix. And I'm not saying producers can't mix because there are some fantastic producers that can mix. Yeah, of course. But I think there's a lot of artists that, that don't always know the difference. So what you mentioned about, you know, social media and Jason Joshua and all of those kind of people that are the forefronting the mixing world. It's it's definitely I'm definitely seeing a change my end as well. Um, yeah, yeah. In, uh, well, and it's great. becoming more and more that people understand. But like you know, and uh, but at the same time, I think it's just like growth as like because we're talking about artists when we talk about the uh, the lack of understanding. Like that, yeah. they're the people that matter because if there isn't an artist, there isn't a job. So, exactly. And, and yeah. so it's them. It's, it, they're the ones that need to have the understanding, right? Yeah. Um, but. I think that comes with like growth within themselves. Do you see what I'm saying? So the, at the beginning of their, their career, like 
so what if they don't they they think the producer is going to be the one that mixes it do you know what i mean like that's just the natural process and then as yeah. they get further and further into their career and they start growing as artists that's when they start to discover all these like needs different and, parts yeah, yeah exactly yeah and 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 to be fair as an engineer there's that's you they're, they're the kind of artists that you want to be picking up on do you know what i mean because they're the ones that are trying to grow and you'll and, grow with them exactly say, yeah. Yeah. yeah so in terms of like educating the artist i think um you know that's that they're, they're just not going to be interested until they need to be interested do you know yeah. what i'm saying and they're not going to yeah. learn until they need to learn that's why so, it's a slow process isn't it for engineers you've got to keep grinding keep doing it and then yeah you know. ex exactly there is this yeah. there is this curve of like i want to become an engineer but everyone around you doesn't see the need of an engineer so it's not like you know you're in a town and like there's not a pub for 10 miles so you open a pub because there's a clearly a need for it it's like <laughs> nobody understands the need so yeah, yeah. it's all about you know um just showing your services do you know what i'm saying and and because so, i still get it today i because i have the opposite thing right where um i'll get dms about uh recording sessions and stuff and then they're always asking like oh um yeah can, so like um can you make me this kind of beat and then i'm like yeah okay well uh i'm not necessarily a producer Right. I get the same. Yeah. It's, it's so I'm glad you're saying this as well. Yeah, yeah. I feel the same. I, yeah. Yeah. And then they expect that you are going to, they're going to come to the studio for a two hour recording session, get a beat yeah. made for them, record it, and it be mixed and mastered and be ready to put on Spotify within an hour yeah. of them leaving the studio. <laughs> and it's like, happen, okay, it? well, but that that's when you just see it sort of like at the very beginning, like I just take a, you know, a very calm and sort of like, approach to it so no matter who they are i'll take the time and be like okay well here's actually what i do and this is what i charge and is this something that yeah you need right and then they can make their own decision on whether or not they're gonna go with me we know that it's the right choice for them yeah but you know it is where it is and uh, that's not to say I, I do actually produce as well but um, i was gonna say do you do a lot of mixers you know you know, colleagues and everything i feel like Un unless i mean again everybody's career path is different but one thing i notice a lot of kind of you know the top end mixes like the jason joshua's you know and his mixing style is also quite quite production heavy actually as well in the sense of how much he does he'll change um, he'll just remove the kick and swap swap the kick out so it's kind of blending slightly but do you find you're doing a lot of production in your career so far to get to get mixing as well if, if that makes sense because i feel like there's a little bit a bit of both with some some engineers um, they kind of have to um you know just in your nah, career so far I nah guess. so i think if i'm being fully honest yeah the, uh i produce but mostly as like for myself right yeah um, that's great yeah, yeah. but but um but because i like making like lo-fi hip-hop love that uh and occasionally yeah, yeah. i'll put a track out on yeah. spotify but like it's not like a mad thing for me yeah. um but when i produce for clients nowadays um because i have the ability to i don't like make beat packs and send beat packs out to people no, or whatever no. i'll do two things right and it really depends on the project because it's like a passion thing for me and it's like i don't charge anywhere near enough to what i should be for these things right so because of the time that it takes me to do it and i don't and i do so much mixing it's like i don't have the time a lot to yeah, do it yeah. anyway but if someone's like i want a custom beat um and i don't want to and i want to do it with you right so and the I'm whole like, okay, thing cool. yeah. yeah 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 i'll be like okay cool well i need if you want me to do it i need i need references right yeah because i'm not going to sit there and just like make beats with you so <laughs> i want you to send me a bunch yeah. of records that you're like i want it like this yeah and then I'll do that and then we can make it as custom and, and as I interesting it, yeah. as they want for them. And I'm pretty good at that as well, right? So yeah. I, I, I'm i very good at just like listening to a record and making something just like that. And I can probably, I can do near enough any genre like that. Yeah. Um, but the, and the other thing is, is, you know, and, and I do this as sort of like, um, as a service to the artist because I feel for them and I know this happens a lot is, yeah they'll make a song and again it's like lack of education on their part but this does happen they'll go to, they'll go to mix it and then i'm like we need beat stems because this mix is absolutely 
fucking shit. Sorry, can I? <laughs> sorry, can I swear? <laughs> I, I just love how honest you're being. It's great. <laughs> uh, but Keep yeah. going. Yeah. Apologies. Uh, le- uh, can I? Uh, am I? Am I right to swear or not? Of course you can. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry. This is an uh, honest conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and uh, and then, uh, but I'm like, you know, if you want this to be the best record, it can be. I, I need those stems. And sometimes, if the record's so, if the beat beat is so badly mixed, I just won't accept it. Because might as well recreate it, I guess. So that's exactly <laughs> it. So then I'll be like, "Can you get the beat stems?" No, because sometimes the producers lost the stems, or um, they've fallen out with the guy, or it's been sold on YouTube. Yeah. So that's when I'll be like, "Okay, cool. I offer this service. It costs yeah. this much, and I'll recreate the beat for you." And but I obviously have to make it very clear to them that it's not going to be the same beat because that's plagiarism, right? Of course. But we'll make it as close Similar to it vibes. as we can so yeah. you can maintain the vibe of the song and you don't have to like recreate your whole song um and yeah that's basically like as far as it goes with production but i do offer those i do offer those services but it, it, it's like um you know it's project by project it's it it, 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 it totally really depends on the situation and yeah. and if i'm and I, again if we're just being like really really honest it's like it depends on the the client as well because sometimes clients are just like i'm just not interested in getting into that with you do you know what i mean because <laughs> you're gonna be a ball ache like, kind of problem do you know what i mean and it's gonna be know way too... down a rabbit hole <laughs> yeah 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 like i you know i'm getting pretty good at it now like i can smell an, a problem uh like yeah <laughs> within like the first few uh, you know text messages or whatever i can be i sort of like mm, this guy's gonna be difficult yeah <laughs> and that's not what i got into this for do you know what i mean like yeah. i'm not interested in that so and like when and 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 i i like to feel like i've done enough to warrant that like if you've asked me to mix your record then yeah. you know that i'm i'm good at what i do yeah. so don't like question too much of what i'm doing do you know what i mean like yeah trying to tell you how to do your job (laughs) yeah yeah exactly like don't get me wrong i'm happy to do recalls yeah like i want it to be perfect for you but it gets there's it get there's a tone sometimes and like uh, and 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 a certain point where it's like i don't really think the problem is with me here if i'm being honest do you know what i mean and i'm just like really honest like that sometimes so and you know it gets like that but yeah yeah i don't know interesting i know that um i'm interested you know itself as a mixing engineer and i know the audience are as well and one kind of question that does come up a lot actually is um the whole parallel um processing uh, in in mixing um now you mentioned this about... seems to be the like one thing that or uh, uh, that seems to be the only thing i ever talk about online is parallel <laughs> processing <laughs> I don't know why. Well, I won't it's... go into it too much though, but I just No, it's and, fine. And there's a there's a lot of kind of some engineers love it, some engineers hate it, some engineers know about it but don't do it. Now you mentioned about getting your drums to slam and then you bring in the instruments and you have your instrumental bass and the vocal bass and all of that. Now talk about then, if you can for a little bit, your your kind of parallel way of doing things and, and you know. Let's go back from the start. Okay, so rather than like (laughs) telling people like exactly like what parallel compression is and like how I do it, because there's, I, you can go on YouTube and you can find a video of me saying that, right? (laughs) But like, I'll tell you why I do it. Go on. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. So again, a lot of the stuff that I'm working on has, is like drill, trap, UK rap, stuff like that. And having a knowledge of how these beats are created 90% of the time, it's like samples from splice or sample packs or whatever. And these drums have been EQ'd and compressed and X, Y, Z probably three or four times before they've even been sent to me. Unlimited. Yeah, (laughs) completely. (laughs) Exactly. Right. And so, and again, with full respect to the producer, those they've picked those sounds because that's how they want it to sound. Do you know what I mean? Like proper producers, that's it. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, yep. and they don't want you fucking around with it too much, right? So in my head, I'm like, okay, cool. I just got to get the best out of this. So when I'm parallel compressing something, it's so I can draw out the punch and get the impact that I want from these sounds without affecting the original sound itself if you see what I'm saying. So I'm trying to keep the essence of that sound, that kick, that snare, or the the whole groove as a whole, 
whilst giving just and 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 you know in my head I create I'm creating like a really annoying little brother that's just like constantly doing exactly what that's doing but more aggressively do you see what i'm saying like the yeah, main more annoying <laughs> yeah exactly exactly but that, yeah, yeah. and that's it and, and then just blending yeah. the two this is yeah. how my head works i think of things in stupid ways but it's great <laughs> <laughs> and uh and 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 that's so, so that's sort of like my process so you know getting that sound that i want but without removing the source if you see what i'm yeah, saying so yeah, yeah. and that's why i parallel compress you know it's yeah. the same reason because it's like if i do it on a vocal for instance like the vocal i'm like oh the vocal needs to be more aggressive or like it needs to like cut out more at this particular frequency so it like rides across the beat or like or like the rapper's like like a really fast and he has a lot of like cadence like going on do you know yeah, what i mean yeah. and i need that to come out yeah um so but it brings up you know, if I drive my compression too yeah. much, I can get that out of the record, but I'm also sort of sucking the life out of it a bit in the dynamics. So I leave that in there and then I just blend like a superly, com that's not a word, but a super compressed, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a super compressed version <laughs> of that the underneath, just like banging <laughs> up against it. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giving you that effect that you need. So that, so that, that's, that's, that's why I, 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 I use parallel compression a lot. Yeah. Um, do you do much processing on the subgroups in general? Because I know you mentioned how you have a, a drum bus, instrumental bus. You know, what, one thing I personally do is I do use some imaging occasionally on my all music bus, similar kind of thing. And I'll, in the choruses, I'll, you know, make it a, just a little bit wider than I would do in the verses. You know, little tricks like that. Are you kind of doing the same approach with your uh, individual buses? I know it will change, obviously. But just a general um so yeah again it really depends on the record and what yeah. it needs and how much i have um uh like how much material i have to work with yeah because sometimes you're like limited a lot right yeah, um, yeah and those tricks can actually come in like more useful at those points but yeah. um i mean i do a lot of mid-side eq um, okay. yeah, yeah. so when it comes to like widening things and uh and tightening things in like groups and stuff like that so like i might like remove like a lot of the sides of the 808 because i want it to be super like directional and in the middle okay and yeah, then yeah. and and, and that, that that's if like the rest of the song has like big wide pads and stuff like that and i'm like right i'm gonna leave those sides for the pads yeah. and make that sacrifice and then just so i can still make the 808 like knock your hat off i'm just gonna go right down the middle yeah right? like um, a mono maker and, all the way up <laughs> yeah exactly, yeah and, 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 and using like a mid-side eq can help me yeah, achieve yeah. that yeah um and i do that a lot as well with like the main pockets of um my like so say like uh the the frequency greedy uh sounds like guitars pianos like the main samples whatever yeah. i'll um cut out i'll i'll find where the clarity is in my vocal like where whatever frequency it's like resonating at for me because it's different for every vocalist of obviously course, yeah. um and i will remove the mids from the up from the instruments that are that are uh, running at the same frequency and yeah. then widen it on the sides basically creating this little pocket for the vocal to sit in so it doesn't sound like it's on top but it still sounds like super clear so it's almost being hugged by the rest of the mix um yeah, yeah. rather than like sitting on top so that's like nice. a, yeah in i don't know if that answers your question but yeah no no that answer and uh, you know the listeners they'll i think it's not always about what is someone doing it's also why are they doing it and yeah, that's yeah a perfect yeah. example of, of, of why you're doing it because I, I feel like you know you got like different mixers like the guy uh, leslie breathway who does a lot of the cardi b stuff he doesn't really do any parallel at all and then others do like jason joshua does a ton of it so it's just interesting to see kind of different perspective and different engineers and on how they're doing it and that question comes up a lot is you know should yeah. i be parallel processing should i not you know i, I think, think it is, I you know, you know there's loads of different ways to get to the same destination right yeah. it all just depends on what road's most comfortable for you to walk down do you know what i mean yeah. so as as you can probably tell like my brain just works in like weird ways sometimes and i think about things in like the oddest way right and yeah. like sometimes feels mad backwards for people but that's just how i work you know what i mean it's the end that's result just... isn't it if the mixes yeah. from you i sound great which they do then you're, do... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're doing yeah. something like, right <laughs> my my girlfriend will say it to me all the time i'll be talking about something she'll be like why are you why are you why are you saying it like that and i'm like i don't know <laughs> you know it's just how my brain works i'm like, so passionate yeah <laughs> 
yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll be like saying uh, something in just like, I'll be using like an analogy or something. And she's like, what? Yeah. That analogy is like so far gone. And I'm like, in my head, that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Do you find as a as an engineer yourself as well that a lot of the tracks you're mixing are you uh, having to master them as well um, with a lot of your stuff? How are you finding that? Just, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I kind of put myself in this position. I'm not going to lie. From the very beginning of my career, because yeah. it's actually weird, right? So um, the record above my head, yeah, yeah, that's Aladdin by Notes. I was the mastering engineer on that, right? Okay, and that I mastered that record. Um, <laughs> this is kind of crazy, yeah. But I mastered that record like before I'd had any real big mixes out. So, okay. which is uh, normally the other amazing. way around, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most people have loads of mixes out, yeah, and then they get into mastering or whatever. Um, again, just how my brain works. Like, I got asked to master it. I'm like this. So this is how I got into the industry. Yeah, like I just say yes to things, right? It will, and I'll, Opportunities and I'll, there, and I'll just there. figure it out on the way yeah I yeah. never only ever mastered records for myself at this point yeah I was right. a recording engineer and I was work I was working for Charlie Sloth at the time we just built his studio and I was recording pretty much solely for Charlie Sloth uh not like his radio stuff but like he has he had like a um a record label called Grimy Limey at the time and we I was everything was getting run through me yeah. And uh, anyway, we were doing uh, one of his albums. I think it was called The Plug or something like that. And Notes came in. And then, yeah, he was like, oh, like, we got this record. Da, da, da. They played it to me. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's kind of cool. And uh, and then, like, the next day, I got a call from his manager uh, and was like, oh, can you, like, master this record? And I was just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Calm. Well, yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and so I, so I loaded it up. I took it to the studio. And... Um, <laughs> I love this. <laughs> yeah, like outside of a session and uh, and just give it a go. Like I just gave it a go, you know. I loaded up a bunch of masters that I liked that were in the lane. I sort of knew the surrounding principles of mastering because I'd been doing it for myself a little bit. Yeah. And um, yeah, I give it a go. And uh, I sent it back and they they loved it. They didn't have any notes or anything. They were like, yeah, sweet. And I was like, cool. And uh, and then like, I didn't even really think about the record like that because I tend to not like listen to music that I worked on like at once it's out there and released. Like not for yeah. any real reason, but just because I'm, by the time yeah. it's out, I'm already listening to other stuff and working on other stuff. I, I listen to music all day for a job. So uh, yeah, when yeah, I'm out funny. and about, I you know, I don't really listen to music. I listen to podcasts and audiobooks something else yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. um yeah. and uh and then yeah the time the, uh, the time that i realized it was gone really big yeah was uh my dad picked me up from the station i went to see him and uh he had like playing capital or something and it was being played on the radio and i was like oh this is my this is my song i i did this and he was like oh really and i was like yeah and then i googled it and i was like shit it's on like 30 million plays like what the fuck uh, just goes to show to all these listeners that you never know what opportunity comes about. <laughs> yeah. And then, but that's what I'm saying. And then off the back of me mastering that, then people will just assume that I could mix. Right. Yeah. And I started getting loads of mixing stuff. And because I'd already mastered it, they were like, can you mix and master this? And me just like being young and hungry um, was like, yeah. And I just started doing both really. But I do. So like, if I get like big projects now, I will always like suggest to the, um yeah. artists like you know if you want to get another pair of ears, ears on this like here's a couple of guys that yeah. uh i like that master that well you're a big mastering work. engineer now y yeah <laughs> got, well yeah playing for it <laughs> yeah i know yeah but um <laughs> but uh my my passion's in mixing you know so yeah of course I'm, of course i love mixing um but mixing? it is funny <laughs> how it works and 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 uh but yeah but i i always whatever the record is even if you know but it that it when i do my pricing um it's changed recently but up until very recently um the the master was always included in the price just because i would just do it regardless because i had a vision of what i think it should sound like at the very end of it and i sort of yeah. wanted to be the person that finished the record i wasn't interested in giving it to anyone else to do anything and i felt like i could achieve it so yeah. and for most do you mix of... into your mastering ch chains like, like i've got a mix bus for example and i could add you know the limiters and it, it theoretically there's an argument for whatever mix bus is mastering but you know like it would be fine for mastering. Do, do you mix into your mix bus and then kind of add your limiters of what you need or do you nah. do an unlimited separate nah. projects I mix, and master it? 
I mix with a very, very open um, mix bus. I very, yeah. very rarely put anything on it. Okay. Interesting. Um, yeah. And I, I like to keep a lot of headroom and I do keep the processes very separate. Yeah. So I won't ever master a record the same day that I've mixed it. Um, hence why my turnaround time is longer than some people's um because i will step away from the record for a day or two yeah and then come back and master it because yeah. again i don't i want it i do want to feel like i'm i'm trying to get more out of it otherwise yeah. i may as well just slap a limiter on my mix and just mix into them and try to master it but like i want to get the most out of the mix and then get step away from it clean my ears rest my ears yeah and um and then be like, okay, well, how can I improve this? Do you see what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, it's a, from, like a from mindset a, from way a of doing it. From a mastering perspective. Yeah. Because um, that's I know what I'm gonna get, is. I know I'm going to get a lot of questions for this, but did you master that track in Logic? Or, how, how, you know, and, and kind of what... Yeah, what, um, bro, I mastered that track in Logic with like four plugins. I was going to... Because I don't know these questions are going to come in. Them, I charged them like... <laughs> I think I charged them like 50 quid. <laughs> I, I love all this. Would you mind saying kind of what your process, because I just know that they're going to be questions that they're going to ask. So what what is, I guess, your process for mastering? And what did you particularly do in that song? Would you remember? You probably may not remember. Uh, well, it's it's not changed a lot, to be fair. Yeah. I, um, I mean, so with that particular record, um, I don't hold me to this because it might not be right. And no, no, that's fine. No, just, just a general thing of your master. It would have chain probably then, been yeah. a uh, Q three on top, and I would have done some sort of like because I didn't mix the record. I think uh, J Rocks mixed it. Sick mix okay. engineer. Yeah. Um, and you know, if you got a brilliant mix, it's easy to do a brilliant master. Yeah. Right. So, full was he happy with your master? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I assume he was. I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Um, but uh, yeah. but the uh, the you know it would have been a pro Q three, and yeah. I probably would have done some like stereo stuff, like mid side stuff, because I because I even do that. I do that still, even at the mastering uh, side of things, tucking yeah. in the mids and opening the sides, uh, making it wider. Especially if I haven't mixed it, um, yeah. and then most of the time I'll go into like. I like using the G comp, like the SSL, okay. like plugin, yeah. getting that glue, um, always, you know, keeping the, the attack kind of, um, slow and then, you know, letting the auto attack do its thing. Yeah. Um, getting that glue, that punch from it. And, uh, th there would have been some other plugins. I'm pretty sure I actually put a reverb on, uh, the master, okay. like really, really, really subtle. Uh, but I felt like the mix was a little bit dry and I think cause okay. it was so open and spacey. I just wanted like to feel like a little bit of room within it. Cause that's a very bold thing to do to put a reverb on a master. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, but like there wasn't kind of... no, it's such an, there's not much going on in the yeah. song. If you listen to it, um, yeah. it's a really open song and I just wanted that to sort of like almost act as like glue. Yeah. Love I it. do remember that being a thing. And I remember researching it and being like, okay, I'm going to try it on this. And, um, and then, yeah, there probably would have been a couple of other little things on there. Like, uh, like, uh, you know, what's the one that I'm using at the moment? Um, it wouldn't have been the, what I was using then, but I like temp tape emulation sort of stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I yeah. think it was it called Studa Studa. Oh, Studa, the, uh, UAD one. Yeah. 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 yeah, I yeah use that's that quite one, a lot that. at the moment. Yeah. Um, and then it would have just been going into like a, an L2. Yeah. Uh, Do you aim for a film. certain loudness generally? I mean, I, I, See, I, back I, then, I, yeah. back then I would yeah. done it all by ear, right? Cause I didn't really, even at that point I, w I wasn't like totally just being fully transparent. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't Love like this. fully clued up <laughs> <laughs> with like, like, like the LUFS meters and stuff like that. No one was talking about it. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, no, there wasn't any information about any of this stuff. And like Spotify hadn't gone on a mad one about it all yet. Yeah. yeah. So, cause that's this like kind brilliant. of, this is like, more, that's more recent stuff. Like the whole yeah. streaming, uh, minus 14. But that being said, I don't actually really pay too much attention to that now. No. Like my master's come out at like nine. That's oh, good. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of arguments on the whole ceiling thing, whether it should be like 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0. 0.5. For me, I don't care. I just do 0 0.1 as long as it's not No, distorting. my ceiling is always <laughs> 0 
my ceiling is 0.03. How come you choose that figure? Just um, why not? Just because... I don't know. I like. I do, I do like where that sounds. I've tried other num. I've tried other Have numbers, you, yeah. right? And and it's super. This is getting crazy. Like detailed. this is really technical. Like, <laughs> no one's gonna fucking notice, yeah. But I <laughs> notice, especially um, on like consumer based products, right? Yeah. I've noticed the difference with stuff that I've mixed a little hotter or whatever. Really? I, just, yeah. I, I always do zero point zero one. Is it zero? Yeah, zero point zero one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just do like that number. Um, Fair enough, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and and again, obviously, like it's all it, it's all zeros and ones coming out of a computer. But like, yeah, I just yeah. want to make sure that I'm cool. Do you know what I mean? I like, st- I know some not- engineers that are like, no, it has to be zero point zero five. I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and to be fair, I don't have it anymore. But my whole brand at that point was minus three dB. Um, okay. So that kind of like lent into it as well, probably. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is so technical. Yeah, but um, this is proper geek talk. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that that was that was the that was the name of my record label that I was running at the time. Okay, um, cool. as well. So it was going to be like, what, what ceiling are you using? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, but the, yeah. yeah, the limiter. Um, yeah. So uh, to be fair, I actually like re- I I. I um go off of uh what sh- what streaky does quite a lot so okay. shout out to streaky um yeah his stuff's he, great on the uh, tiktok and all the videos yeah but... well he yeah and yeah. he just knows how to use that uh l2 limiter he knows yeah. how to get the most out of it so i paid a lot of attention to what he was doing and i do some like similar processes and stuff like that like with the oversampling and, yeah, um, I do that thirty-two I'd, bit over something, but it ruins my computer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah, yeah, I do. I, I, I do. Um, I like how uh, time sixteen sounds. Yeah. So I just stick to sixteen. Um, okay. And I was showing my mate as well. I was like, "Bro, don't change your mix at all. Just change the oversampling because yeah. he had it at like four, right?" Yeah. And I was like, "Change it to sixteen and just listen." And he was like, "It just so much more cl- clear." like yeah. and like brightness came to it do you know what i mean and i was like you know i don't know what the fuck's going on but it sounds better so yeah. um <laughs> this and, is so and, technical and, <laughs> and i do uh and i do um a lot of uh i i like um i take off the chain links and stuff to keep it more open so they're being limited on the two separate stereo uh, oh, you do like dual mono kind of limiting, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So that, but you can do that within the plugin. So like, they're yeah. they're not like, they're not working together. They're working separately because yeah. again, like the stereo field isn't the same. So yeah. on both sides of the mix, it might sound the same, but it's probably not. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I keep those unlinked, and I find that kind of brings a bit of wideness to the mix yeah. as well. Yeah. Um. These are all like super subtle things, but all, all of this stuff all adds up. Adds up. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. And as long as I'm not driving it a lot, and I just like you know when I run in uh, my main thing when I'm mixing is like headroom, headroom, headroom. I'm just trying to get as much headroom as I can whilst getting the loudness because my I'm just you know I I hate listening to like drill and stuff like that that's just been squashed of all dynamics. You can and hear the distortion so much, from the limit. Yeah, and there's so much of it out there. You know, yeah. my idea is to try and, and, and I'm still working on it, you know, like is, is to get that feeling because that's what they like, that, that, that heavily, yeah. heavily driven sound, but maintaining dynamics. So I, I tend to use clippers for that kind of sound. Yeah. A hundred percent. But, yeah. it, but you know, and but it, it, it comes from like, you know, how the, 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 mostly how the kick and the bass like impact the record and making sure that you're not what, what pe- where people are going wrong is they're driving that too much and then they're actually losing that dynamic, but getting that crunch on the limiter. That's where that sounds coming from. Yeah. They're, they're not, they're not using, they're not mixing it in properly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but because everyone's just got so used to hearing that, that's what people want. Right. When yeah, it actually yeah. sounds a bit shit, but yeah, like, yeah. that's just what people are used to listening to. You know, it's, it's, it, we, I, I you know, not to cuss out the UK, but us engineers, we should be embarrassed, yeah, because like the UK engineers, because you got guys in America that are doing it better than us. Like, what's going on? Like, yeah. they've taken drill and the mixes sound way better. And and this is our sound, right? Yeah. And they're doing it way better over there. So like... They're doing it properly, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, dude, and I'm like screaming at the producer and the artist, like, please give us the stuff to do this properly because they're doing it properly and they're showing us up right now yeah you know yeah. so yeah it's kind of peak it's like Mad. nah but <laughs> trying anyway it's a constant battle 
Yeah. Do you, do you find though with once you've done all your limiting stuff, do, are you the kind of engineer that kind of bounces offline? Do you print your mixes? Do you find there's a difference in that at all? Are you? Yeah. So the final yeah. I'll do offline. Yeah. Um, just to because they're logic's doing something to qu- speed that up and we yeah. and the only thing it can do is lose data yeah um so it's doing something the only i think i was um uh, at a uh um i don't know uh, i was at nam at one of these talks yeah, yeah and one of the guys from avid was on there and he's saying that they've perfected it the offline um the offline bounce because that was yeah. a whole thing years ago wasn't there where it was different you know but... yeah yeah but no sorry yeah so when i'm doing it in logic i'm doing it like um i'm not doing i'm doing like real-time bounces so like not, okay uh not offline sorry sorry uh, you're do- sorry you, you are doing it real time you said yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah so, sorry okay. um yeah yeah because i'm losing information if I, I i feel like i am losing information by doing it offline yeah but if yeah, i'm just yeah. like you know just like that's like the final print yeah, right? yeah. um and and uh but apparently avid have figured it out so uh, okay yeah they're I, doing I saw something about yeah you it's interesting because do... i feel like some people just don't care do they and other people print i mean i personally print online i guess not as in real time because i'm using an external i just put an analog compressor just to give it a bit of a feel just on the thingy but if i'm not then sometimes i just bounce what compressor is. do you use pardon what compressor is it Oh, I've got a uh, Stam SA4000 MK2. Oh, nice. It's basically a, an SSL G compressor ripoff. Sick. Um, yeah, but Stam... And you just yeah, like run that in, you just run your your mix through that I actually mix. I actually mix through it. So oh, I okay. start the mix, put that on the mix bus, and then, um, yeah, it's... Uh, I tell you what, it's got like, looks like this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I know it, yeah. run the mix through that and it just kind of has that kind of sound but obviously you've got to print it online real time yeah yeah, yeah. i'll tell you what i want to uh to start printing my I'm, i i want to i want to i'm gonna um i'm gonna borrow like uh, borrow it for a couple of weeks to see how yeah. it feels um but uh the ssl fusion yes the eq and compressor apparently it's amazing that yeah. bottom end boost it up and apparently it's unbelievable yeah <laughs> yeah so that's my yeah. next i'm gonna borrow it and then if i like it i think that's gonna be my next purchase and i'm gonna start yeah. running my mixes through that not because i have heard like really <laughs> good, good things about it <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah yeah i, I feel like i friend, start getting I got into a friend it, that though. works for kmr oh um, uh, north london kmr isn't yeah the yeah, music? Yeah. yeah 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 guy called lee i've i i what what before i got into my career just a little background on me I, I used to work when I was at college I, I I interned for a company called Red Dog Music which were okay yeah a music tech uh, company back in the day um and uh yeah he he was there there was a couple of guys and they used to take care of me you know obviously he used to take the piss I was a young guy like you know yeah or, or, or like didn't see any daylight I was just packing orders in the back all day every day <laughs> but um yeah, he, and uh, he's at KMR now, so like I've got a good relationship with him. So he he so you're he's always one. said like, oh, if you just wanted to borrow it or whatever for a couple of weeks, yeah, yeah. he's he's always down. Um, but yeah, that that's how it's, that that that's how like uh, how I got into it, just because I, I I do like to talk about it when I get the opportunity because um, I think it's quite important for guys that are getting into it, yeah, and trying to get into what we do. It's just about opportunity, and my I feel like my story is kind of like a bit unique in a way. Because yeah. um, I uh, was working for this company. Well, not working. Well, I was working for free. But yeah. big up to Fletch and all those guys that gave me an opportunity. I went into the shop one day. My mate needed a pair of speakers. Yeah. Might have been like 19. Yeah. And um, and he needed a pair of speakers and we were going around. And I just said to the guy, I was like, oh, um, I, wanna, I, can you, I want a job. Yeah. Like, can I come and work here for free? Amazing. Um and uh and and he was like you know laughing at my confidence and whatever and i was like mate i'll just turn up and you just ask me whatever you want me to do i'll just do it yeah anyway <laughs> started doing that got myself up to eventually i was getting paid for like two days a week about yeah. having to do one day for free still and um you know you got your foot in the door yeah got my foot yeah. in the door started using all this equipment da, 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 da. and uh and anyway um relentless energy the the energy drink company yeah uh, they wanted a studio being built on denmark street in london 
And uh, so they've hired Red Dog to do this and to kid it out, and basically design it and stuff. And then because it was, uh, they were doing more um, like grime and yeah. rap, they were like, they asked, oh, can you get, can you send one of your guys down just to like test it out for the day just to make sure it's all working and stuff? Because they weren't, they didn't have any like engineer like permanently on site at the time. Yeah. Uh, so they were like, go on, Billy. Oh, that's my nickname for them. Um, you go down there and like test out. And I'm like, sweet, man. Like, because I used to be in this UK uh, like rap duo yeah. jazz thing with my boy D back in the day. Actually used to rap and make beats. Um, and we were like, make free studio time for, for a day like gassed. Amazing. Went down there. Anyway, and this was kind of <laughs> similar to the whole uh, mastering story. Yeah. Was using it for a day. Now I've not done any professional engineering what so all at this point yeah like my little home studio was crazy like, yeah, like yeah. not cool at all right my speakers were on glass i didn't have a good interface at all like it was terrible right like proper little like dead mic but you know humble beginnings and um and then the lady was like oh uh her name's jill she was running the space at the time so it was like a an event space at the top and then downstairs in the basement they had a music studio the, amazing the yeah and they were like oh um are you an engineer and i just said yeah and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then she was like cool can i take your number and stuff and she was like oh what's your day rate and i didn't know i was just like i think i was getting paid like 50 pound a day at red dog uh, yeah. and i was just like 100 pound a day and uh she was like okay cool sounds good and um <laughs> should have said 500 <laughs> yeah well you know i was young at the time and like 100 pound a day for me was like sick let's go yeah of course <laughs> um and uh but um yeah so uh i didn't think anything of it she took my number anyway like a week later she called me up she was like oh can we book you for two weeks uh for a studio session for two weeks and i was like oh okay like um monday to friday for two weeks she's like, no no 14 days straight and i was like okay cool and i'm thinking shit 1400 quid for engineering <laughs> let's get yourself go. SSL now for that <laughs> say that again yeah. so you can get yourself the ssl oh Fusion yeah exactly for yeah for two weeks straight work <laughs> um and uh anyway yeah so i was like yeah sick uh but but literally it was the opportunity it was just me saying yes right yeah uh, and then i was like right i'll and this has been you know the the story of my life I'll figure it I'll figure it out as I go. Right. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's, I I knew how to use logic. I could set up a microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wasn't, you know, I wasn't technical at all at this point, right? Uh, I was just very passionate and and eager to work. And uh the day before the session, I was like, I don't know who I'm gonna I don't know who I'm recording. Right. <laughs> I have no idea. And uh so I phoned her up just to make sure that the session was still gonna happen. And then who I was working with. And she was like, oh, it's with Getz. And I was like, you're joking. Right? <laughs> now I'm like panicking, like not on the phone. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks. I on the phone. I was like, oh my God. Like, I'm like a massive grime fan. Yeah. Like grew up well, on He's it, right? huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And but like my but but like even when it was underground, my older brother, he would have sets in his garage and like he comes from a DJing background. And like I was surrounded by it like my entire childhood. You know, I was the kid at school that had like long hair. Everyone think I would be like playing like Blink 182 in my headphones, but I was like banging out the new Wiley EP or something like that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like no uh, uh, super unexpected. Um but yeah, and then I was like, shit. Anyway, turned up on the day and yeah, it was very, very uh, stressful and nerve wracking <laughs> because, you know, he was asking me, he was like, bro, my vocals need to be brighter and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, I don't fucking know. What, like, what, what do you even mean? <laughs> right. And uh, luckily the, there was a couple of producers there. One guy, um, shout out 10 billy uh he, he was like real help. Like he sort of would see that I was struggling and be like, get the EQ and push 10k yeah. stuff like that yeah yeah uh, and help me out um and i got through it but like in that first two weeks i recorded everyone because obviously gets is a super well-known guy like kano came to the studio wiley the <laughs> neo like That's like li literally all of the legends yeah like rocked yeah. up and pulled up and was recording with him and like all the big like living in the dream stuff. <laughs> yeah like rude kid and everyone and yeah, i was yeah. just like this is unbelievable um and I got That's through, crazy. there was a couple of incidents where I'd like messed up and like me and Getz would get 
not in an argument, but it, was, it wasn't an argument. It was him shouting at me <laughs> and, and me just sitting there and taking it. Uh, but I think I gained his like respect where I just kept, keep turn, I kept oh, turning up. Do you know what I mean? I've lost Even you. Even though, you know what I mean? It was all a bit crazy, but. Um, oh, I lost you then for a little bit. Oh, sorry. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can yep, hear you. Perfect. Good. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, no, I, I was just, missed that last I, bit. <laughs> I was just saying like, uh, you know, I, I think I, that's how I gained his respect and managed to like maintain my position there. Cause shortly after that session, they, that studio hired me as the studio manager and yeah. uh, uh, on like a full-time role. And that was my like introduction to the industry and started where I had my like break and I got to start working with all these crazy artists and m meet, meet people like that have like really changed, uh, that really helped me grow my career, like Charlie Sloth and, um, the late Jamal Edwards and people like that um but yeah it was purely on the basis that i saw an opportunity and i didn't let my fear get in the way i just said yeah. yes and and you know i figured it out on the way because in my head the worst that can happen is someone could say you know this is shit and go home like there's not going to be tried it. Yeah, yeah i tried and i done my best and whenever i've done that it rarely 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 has backfired on me like yeah. very rarely so that's Amazing my like stuff. advice to Fantastic. like anyone that's trying to get into this, you know, just, just, just say you, yes, take all the opportunities. Yeah, man, you just don't be scared. Like, and don't get me wrong. I, I, don't be scared is not the right thing. Cause I actually hate when people say that to me, like you will be scared, but don't let that stop you. You know, cause like, I, I had a full, yeah. the day before I went to this, to this, to the studio, my girlfriend now, she'll tell you, I had a like, full on panic attack. Like <laughs> I, don't, I can't do yeah. this. I can't go. And she sat there and was like, what are you talking about? You have to go. Yeah, you can like, do it, yeah. You have to go. Do you know what I mean? And so you that know, just shows the pressure that you're under. I mean <laughs> Yeah, well, for me, I was you know, I was a young guy. Uh, at that yeah. point I must have been like twenty one or something like that. And um, you know, it was a big opportunity for me. And I just I just didn't wanna uh, uh didn't want to waste lose it, it or ruin yeah. it you just wanted to do the best you can which you, and, that, you didn't. And, and that's it whenever i've said yes and just done things so much as 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 uh as come back from it like the plaque you know yeah. i could have so easily been like i'm not a master and engineer as most people would have <laughs> yeah. i just said yeah and now i've managed to build a a career out of it you know so, so for anyone that's listening just say yes to everything. <laughs> it's, it's honestly, it's the music industry. You just got to take what you can, right? <laughs> just, exactly. Just go for yeah. it. Just go for it. You know, late, you're going to be doing late night sessions. You're going to be doing this, but that's what you want. So, you know, just, just crack on. But there at the same time, do sort of like set yourself boundaries and morals because like you can get quickly sucked into experiences and situations in this industry that and taking you might advantage not feel cut. Yeah, you, yeah. You'll be taking advantage of or you don't feel comfortable with yeah and it's just finding that balance but like always say yes and then you know go with your gut yeah and then go, <laughs> and, and then figure it out after if you get there and you're like this is shit like then yeah. leave you know i've been to like a big sessions like with big artists where i've been uh, you know i was booked for like three days i turned up for three hours and i'm like nah this is not it i'm not feeling this like the yeah. whole situation is off it feels off key and i've just packed my bag and left yeah i mean you know because <laughs> yeah. i'm just like i don't want to get involved in this don't particular deal with situation yeah. yeah amazing yeah. well thank you so much for coming on and spending your time and giving us all the knowledge and information as i say you're a fantastic mixing engineer so it's an absolute Appreciate pleasure that. to have you on thank you um, for having me feel free to mention as well i know you you got your own um podcast coming out so um you know we'll attach all the links uh for all the listeners yeah uh, mixed opinions well yep. episode two came out yesterday i don't know when this is coming out but um yeah. with sean d and we've got some um, other amazing guests coming on um it's going to come out weekly and we'll definitely get yourself on as well and do part two and do part two of this yeah, and yeah. uh yeah yeah check that out it's with me and my co-host proton who's also a fantastic mix engineer and producer fantastic and how can uh, people reach you if they want to book you for mixes and stuff um, my, the best place is my Instagram. Cause I'm, you, you know, you can just shout me on the DMS there, which is mixed by Jocelyn and, um, uh, or, or, or alternatively you can go to, you can search me on engineers.com 
and book me straight through uh, the site. Uh, but yeah, because if you get me through Instagram, most of the time I just um, push you back towards the site. But you, we can always talk about your project on Instagram. Fantastic. And we'll leave all your links uh, in the description below. So all the listeners that are listening to this podcast, don't forget to check the description out and all of the links uh, to him will be there as well. Um, Appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, it was a pleasure having you on. My pleasure. Nice one. Cheers.